So welcome everyone. Uh, this is our first chat of the year. Normally it's first of every month and uh, being January, this is on January 9th. And today we have a very exciting event. We'll be doing it a, a bit differently from our previous ones. And, and, and today's event, you'll get a chance to interact with our circle of core, our patient support and advocacy group. And the first person that I would like to introduce is Nanette Zumwalt. You probably saw her picture on, on, the, on the flyer for this event. Nanette has been my long-term patient. She has ADPKD, it's a genetic disease, polycystic kidney disease, and several uh, family members suffer from ADPKD in her family. And she got a living kidney donation from Diana on December 20th. And she will kick off our year. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things planned for, for the rest of the year, but she'll kick it off and, and go over what we plan to do. So Nanette. Good evening, Dr. Stogie. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with all the core kidney members. Um, I'm one of the newer members to the team. Um, and as Dr. Rostogi said, I'm getting a lot of attention at this point because I am 20 days post-transplant, um, which is pretty exciting and, and quite the holiday miracle. I received my transplant on December 20th from an extended family member, actually the mother-in-law of my son who came all the way from Spain. She flew over from Spain to test to be a kidney donor and then again to donate her kidney on my behalf. So quite an amazing miracle. I think you're gonna hear a lot of stories of miracles, um, altruistic donors, family donors, and recipients tonight with amazing stories, inspiring stories. Um, you may see or hear some tears. I think uh, we all share that in common. This is some pretty powerful things that we are sharing. And um, we, we welcome you to be part of our journey tonight. Dr. Stogi, any questions for me? Well, a lot of questions, uh, Nanette. You look beautiful as always. Thank uh, you. So tell me more about the whole process. You know, the first time we saw you or we met uh, more than 10 years ago. Yes. And now we are here. And, uh, and also a bit about yourself, uh, Nanette. You're in the healthcare business yourself. Um, and quite successful. So, and, and I do want to, you know, piggyback on, on what, what you say for the rest of the program, uh, how important what you work on is. Yeah. So I, um, I have worked in the fields of mental health and addiction my entire career. Um, I won't tell you exactly how many decades that is because that would give away uh, more information that I want to share tonight. But um, for almost 30 years, we've been working in the mental health and addiction arena, helping families and clients um, find resources, educate themselves, um, find treatment, and uh, get to solution to living a long-term life in recovery and having a healthy, well-balanced life. Not much different than what we're searching with kidney disease. You know, we're all looking for that healthy balance um, of mind, body, and spirit. And so I, my professional journey has been in that arena. That's been my focus and my passion um, as long as I can remember. And um, similar to my kidney disease, which was a family trait, you know, um, I lost my mother at an early age of 58 years old while she was awaiting a kidney transplant. She had heart failure. Um, I came into the mental health and addiction field the same way through my older sister, a family member who struggled with both addiction and mental health. So my, my paths kind of intersect both um, career and personally and what drives me and the purpose that drives me. Um, in my story, as Dr. Rostogi said, um, my husband, who's a researcher, Dr. Rick Zumwalt, um, did a lot of research just over 10 years ago, found Dr. Rostogi and the UCLA research program. We, my sister and I, who both suffer from polycystic kidney disease, um, entered a research study for GenarQ, which um, we're told Apton, um, which is now GenarQ. 
I believe it was unnamed at the point that we entered, and we stayed with UCLA through that entire research study. Um, and I believe we benefited greatly from that research study. I encourage anybody who is looking at this to educate themselves, to look into research opportunities, find out what you can, you know, there's very limited things that as a person with polycystic kidney disease outside of diet and health that I could do. But this was something I could do for me and it was something I could do for others um, being part of that research journey. And Dr. Rostogi and his team at UCLA really impacted our journey um, to become our own advocates, to educate ourselves, learn about our disease, learn about opportunities that were out there for us rather than just accepting a path that was put in front of us, you know. Um, I think it was it was very important. And as you can see, um, it connected us in a way that continues. It, it brought me into the core kidney program, which um, I can't speak highly enough about. Um, I get pretty emotional, so I apologize. I'm, you know, 20 days out post transplant. And so forgive my, <laughs> forgive my emotional outburst, but um, the core kidney program has been so impactful in our journey. And I don't know what my family would have done or how we would have successfully navigated um, this journey without the members that you'll hear from tonight. So, and, and you are one of the main members, Nanette, of the, of the core kidney team, the, the giving back and, and what you have done for so many, you know, you know, I, I, I do want to uh, get back on mental health, but before that, Nanette, I, I just want to see, because you talk about patient advocacy, but I also want to talk about your husband, Rick, uh, who has an accomplished career on his own and is a neuropsychologist now. Um, um, you know, what, what, what do you mean by patient advocacy and how did that apply to your case? And, and, and not just you, but how your family advocated for you, Lynette? It's such an important thing. I can't, I mean, I think we could have a whole hour on, on advocacy. Um, and, you know, the beginning of advocacy is really education. I think we all can benefit from more education, whether it's about our illness, whether it's about our opportunities to be altruistic donors, um, you know, finding that education and understanding not just your disease, but what opportunities are out there for you. Um, you know, the mainstream, I, I looked at Western medicine, I looked at Eastern medicine, I looked at nutrition, wellness, research. You know, we really um, educated and advocated for ourselves. And then when we, when we found the systems that worked, we asked questions and we, you know, as you and both Dr. Sakar will share, um, we, we created a care team or at least initial members of a care team. And then those care team members helped build our care team. Um, and I don't think that would have happened for us if we wouldn't have done that research for ourselves, if we wouldn't have found our own voice. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important um, in, in any medical situation or mental health situation to find your voice. And, and also, I think there are a couple of things you mentioned, Nanette, and that's, you know, the E in core is education, but you have to educate yourself, you have to learn, you have to learn about your disease state, because there is no better advocate than yourself, because you know, uh, you know, as much as Rick was there in your family, you know your body the best, the way it reacts to things, the way it responds to things, and getting a team, it's not just Rastogi or, or this person, it's a team that 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 and I think that's where the was a genesis of core kidney program. Um, and we want to go, you know, you have done a lot, Nanette. Um, you have been working nonstop since your transplant, uh, trying to see. And so this is about giving back, and you have been giving back, you know, even before that, but now even more so that no one is left behind. And and we do need everybody's help and support, whoever is on the uh, uh, um, program today. How we can make a difference to everybody that that that. Nanette actually, you know, she lives in Orange County and, and she drove all the way to UCLA 
There are a lot of other programs in between and some south of, of where she lives, but uh, her faith and trust in, in UCLA was, was always there. And we are very grateful for that. But Nanette, I, at this point, I would like to invite Mark Coronel, um, our lead ambassador um, for, for UCLA Core Kidney Program. And uh, I would like him to ask you some questions too and share some of his thoughts. Uh, Mark has gone through some personal loss himself um, and uh, he'll, he'll share about mental health and mental toughness. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rostogi, and uh, welcome everybody to the Core Kidney Program's monthly webinar. Uh, Nanette, I'm so excited that you're here today. It's such an honor. We've been going back and forth with our discussions on um, the kidney transplant journey. Now, one thing I wanted to discuss about was the mental health portion on, and we were discussing this prior, was the fog that you, that you acquired through the years of fighting kidney disease. And once you got that kidney transplant, you were, you were all blazing, ready to go moving forward. How is that experience for you now that you've gotten a kidney transplant? And that, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. It's pretty amazing. You know, I'm, I'm only 20 days in. I'm sure I'm living in a pink cloud right now of this miracle um, that, that's that been gifted to me. Uh, but I, I will, yeah, we um, spoke about just the, the cognitive um, almost deficit that crept in that I wasn't sure, you know, was it was it age? Was it other things I was going through or the stress of the journey that I was going through? But I just didn't feel as sharp. I didn't feel the ability to, um, to really retain information like I used to or to, I wasn't as quick in my responses or my wit. It was just this dulled, dulled cognitive feeling. And, um, and I noticed it. It was impactful to me. And that impacted my mental health knowing that I wasn't, you know, I just wasn't functioning um, physically, mentally, um, intellectually, the way I had been in my life. And, um, and, you know, that cognitive stuff is lifting, it lifted so quickly, um, that it, that it made such a difference. It wasn't like, it was like a gradual decline, but an immediate, impactful, um, change. Amazing. Now I know waking up from a, from a kidney transplant and, and advocating like we do as, as patient advocacies, we've, we've learned a lot about our journey. And as Dr. Ristogi says, we are the ones who know our health inside and out very well. Um, in the process, what have you learned that we can give and share to other patients who are listening today on how to be a better advocate for themselves going through this process? You know, and, and a lot of this came, um, Mark, from you, um, you know, sharing, being willing to be vulnerable, share your story publicly. I really struggled with that. Um, I was afraid of the impact of my professional career, the impact on my company. I was afraid of, you know, what, I don't know, what, what impact, how others would look at me. And um, it, it kept me from being vulnerable and sharing my story and my need for a kidney. And when Dr. Rostogi said, you know, this is the time you have to do this. And I was sharing with you my struggle and you just said point blank, get over yourself. Like, this is important. You have to share, you have to reach out and, you know, to heck with vulnerability. and. That hit me hard. I was like, yeah, get over myself. Like, and the minute I, be, I became vulnerable and the minute I put it out there, the responses were amazing. Um, and, and you really, you know, helped me advocate for myself in that way. Uh, thank you, Nanette. I, I, I really, really appreciate that. And it's, 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 you know, it comes down to the foundation of Dr. Ristogi's help. You know, I needed to find my story. Uh, I, I learned that through the process that vulnerability was my most powerful asset coming in through the education, co educational component of the core kidney program, right? Uh, and, and learning what, what my journey looked like and sharing it with other patients like yourself. So I'm so glad 
you got a kidney transplant this year. I am three years post kidney transplant. I got it December 10th. So we're 10 days apart, three years of a, three years of a mile. Um, but you are on the journey and we're going to be making uh, uh, big noises for this year for the core kidney program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And you know, um, um, what we want to achieve from today's program is how we deal with chronic illnesses, right? Um, and, and mental health is, is really a very big part of that. And, and we are seeing that, we are seeing that whether it be kidney disease, diabetes, heart failure, or any other chronic illness and your mental toughness, your mental attitude. Um, Nanette, you are, you are a very highly successful professional and so are you, Mark. I mean, this, this is, and when this was, um, you know, you Nanette knew for some time, Mark was actually given, you know, I mean, he didn't even know he, you went for, for your annual checkup or, or physical examination when they told that you had kidney disease, it's silent. It doesn't cause any symptoms. And um, so, the mental health is very important. And we know we have, we have Jim Cunningham on the call too, our, our resident psychologist for the core kidney program. But, but, but Nanette, you know, and, and we, we have lived through this, what, what you went through mentally, should I bring this out? Should I, and that being vulnerable is, and, and talking to other uh, patients. Uh, and that's why we have the core, we have Mary Beth on, we have Mark on, we have so many, and that's one of the things that I want to point out to all the attendees today, that we, we used to go to the beach. We used to call the kidney fair at the beach. Uh, the last one was 2019, uh, 2020 COVID hit. Everything went virtual, but we are going back to the beach. Um, March, March uh, 12th is the kidney walk at the beach. So please mark that date. I uh, will put that in the chat as well. It's March 12th. And March 9th is going to be a kidney conference. And, and March 12th is a day that you can interact with other patients who are in different stages and also living donors. We have several living donors on, on the call today, and they will be sharing their story. But, but Jim, do you want to uh, say a few words about what Nanit and Mark just said? Hello. Um, well, I joined the meeting a little bit late, but I got, I believe, most of what both of them said. And just kind of piggybacking off of what you just alluded to. Um, I think it all comes down, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but it comes down to self-care. And I think how you kind of educate yourself and you kind of have a paradigm shift in the process. You know, you, you see it's possible. You see it's possible for you to make growth. You see it's possible for you to live a... Um, uh, a, 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 a vibrant, relevant kind of existence. And I think when people first get into this process, it, 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 there needs to be an educational piece to it. So um, I think that's what I'm hearing as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, uh, does that resonate with you, Mark? Or, or yeah. anybody? Yes, um, yes. Internet? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, you need tools, I think. Um, like we've discussed about, you need structure, uh, you need to understand, there's a lot of moving parts to this puzzle. And, you know, it takes time. Um, I mean, how long did it take you to get to your place where you're at, Mark, in terms of you, uh, the working knowledge you have of what works for you or what doesn't work for you? Well, it was actually in phases, right? I, I, I wanted to make sure I recovered. I wanted to make sure that I was mentally capable of getting back into the working working world with working with clients and and, 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 and really structuring their growth. But at the same time, I was also doing that with mine. So it, it was, I had to listen to my body. I had to listen, can I do a push-up? Can I do a sit-up? And that's essentially what, what I was doing was slowly pushing myself forward as, as, as doing a one step at a time type mentality. Like I don't wanna walk 10 steps if I can only do three. I remember when I got to right out of transplant, they said, if you can do seven laps around the hospital, we'll let you go. And uh, um, I was like, I can do that. That athlete came out of me. And uh, I really wanted to say, look, I can do seven laps, two days, let's go. But I know through the procedures, they, they needed to make sure that I was ready and willing and able to, to, to get home. So it's a step-by-step -step thing and, and, and constant, constant mental and physical exercise was, was my journey doing so.
Yeah. And but I think everybody comes to this, it like just Nanette also alluded to, it's from such a different place. Not everybody was an athlete. And so I think I think there's certain types of skills that are transferable. And I think that's why networking and that's why understanding what worked for other people and you know, breaking it down or deconstructing it, taking it into a smaller piece. I think somehow. Nanette, does that resonate with you or? It does. It does. You know, we each are going to have our own journey. Um, as I said earlier, my transplant was preemptive. So, you know, I was able to walk two miles a day before I went into transplant in preparation for my body to be a little bit stronger. Um, and not everyone, like Dr. Rostogi said, you know, this came on quickly with Mark. There was no preparation time. So differences and, and evaluating and not comparing to each other, right? But comparing to ourselves. Right, right, right. And I think and, and I think the journey becomes, and that's why it's so profound to share. Because if somebody can just hear something that kind of uh, is similar to what they're going through, mm -hmm. um, I, I, they catch fire or they um, it motivates them or it gives them a perspective that they wouldn't otherwise have. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, so, so one of the things um, that, and that was why we formed the core kidney is that you need to have a support group and, and it could be your, your, it could be your family, but sometimes that's not the case. I, I know Nanette, your family, you know, I know all of them and, and the most loving and caring. I know Mark's family, but sometimes some people don't have that, but, but even if they have that, you need to, link to other people who have been through this path, who have gone through this, whether it be you know kidney disease, whether it be dialysis, whether it be transplant. And I think that's where the support group really comes in, but the right kind of support group. And I think that's why I, I always focus on, because if you talk to the wrong person, uh, they might lead you in the wrong direction. And I think that's very important, whether it be in information on the internet, is the people that you speak to, that you, you actually assess them, does that really make sense what this person is saying? And, and I do want to say um, for our ambassadors that are on today, and we have Brock and, and we have Alex and Nanette and, and, and Mary Beth, and, and, and I, I, I know a lot more, these are all vetted people because they have to go through proper training before they can speak. So surrounding yourself with, with those people would be very important because it's tough with the COVID thing happening. Um, you know, we're coming out of COVID, but still there's lingering effects that we'll have for COVID for a very long time. It's important to get the right support group. Um, and, you know, I'll also ask uh, Dr. Sarkar if you want to say a few things about, about transplantation, but then we're going to come back to, to Nanette, your journey in getting a preemptive, you, you threw the word out there, preemptive. So we'll talk about what preemptive really means. All Start right. All right, can everybody hear me? Well, welcome everyone. Um, this is the first chat of the year, so I'm very excited. My name is Molly. I am by training a nephrologist and a transplant nephrologist. You know, my story is not as motivating or as strong as Nanette and Mark, but I uh, grew up in India and I have been here in this country and I did my education in UCLA and I found myself in core kidney. But you know, I had the great fortune my entire life of having great people, supportive people surround me and support me with the best of education. So, you know, that's why core kidney, because, you know, I automatically drifted or found myself drifting towards the core kidney where you have such a constellation of wonderful people who are willing to do anything and everything you ask for supporting the community. And, you know, there's a saying that the best thing to do with the best things in life is you give it away. So um, I have had good fortune of having good people, good companies, good education, and that's what I want to give back through Core Kidney as this platform. And, you know, I'm hearing these stories of this mental fogging. I hear these stories of being lost, of finding, of dealing with stress, of dealing with loss. Um, and, you know, there's... 
this medical aspect of it, which complicates these things way more than we anticipate. Because, you know, as a layman or as a layperson, you don't know what you're doing or what you're dealing with is A, is it expected? B, is it what am I supposed to do? And, you know, that's where having a strong team, having a strong support and having a medical support would help you, would really take you a long way. And, you know, that's why I put so much emphasis and I like with all my heart, I'm ready to give to Core Kidney because, you know, it truly takes a village to make a transplant happen. It truly takes it there. So with that, I would say, you know, I offer myself to Core Kidney. I offer my services to anybody and everybody who needs help, who needs any support, who needs answers to some of the questions. I promise you, I will do my honest effort to get you those answers. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar. And we have Dr. Shah as well um, um, in our attendance today. So why are we having this meeting? This obviously meeting is, 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 is a bit different from our previous meetings. A couple of things for the, for the attendees. Whatever topics they want to be you know, discussed in the future meetings, please put them in the chat box and we will discuss them. But, but how about taking care of a patient? What, what goes into it? Well, we have mental health, we have diet, and we have exercise. There are a few things that, that we don't speak about that much. Diet, I think people are taking a bit more seriously, but still not as much as we would like them to be. Mental health is definitely something that is not on the radar. We, we just don't think about that. That just, unless somebody is has some other manifestations um, that will, will prompt you know, a referral to, to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And, and also being a pharmacologist myself, I like to really minimize medications as much as we can, but the medications that you need, you need to take them. That, that is a must. They, if your blood pressure is out of control or your cholesterol is high or other medications that are coming out to slow down progression. As far as when it comes to, to anxiety and, and mental health, I my preference is to go with, with, with a psychologist and, 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 and get psychotherapies if needed. And, and that's where you know, Jim and his team has been providing a lot and, and these kind of programs. But what, what I would really like the audience to take today is that do they think that they, they are in peak mental health or there are, are, are challenges and, and, and there's room for improvement over here because that has significant impact on your overall health. And it could be through inflammation, it could be through cytokines, chemokines, messengers that your body sends out. So, so having, having mental health front and center is very important. And as you probably have seen from our, the, the other thing that, that uh, is, is, is diet and, and um, you know, and mental health and diet goes together as well. When people are not happy, when people are, and, and Jim, you might want to speak about that as well, is, is when people eat, you know, and, and, and even for eating properly, we need to have discipline. We need to, you know, when people are depressed, when they're anxious, their, their diet does turn, you know, bad. And that has, and it's a vicious cycle that starts. So Jim, I mean, where are you right now, by the way? Are you skiing somewhere? No. You know, it looks, yeah. it looks like I'm just, just yeah. The heater went off in my house. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. I'm freezing. Okay. <laughs> um, well, and you know, just what we, we, what we had discussed in terms of, I think that's a real big uh, emphasis when you're talking about food and structure and, a lot of times there's no precursory knowledge that people have about nutrition when they're diagnosed with this. So that they need to learn these things. And um, I think it's one of the most important things uh, to drive home that they can improve their health by eating properly mm -hmm. and seeing results and losing weight and you know watching their sugars. And, uh, you know, it, it's really no different than any other aspect, whether it's uh, nutrition or whether it's exercise. Um, there, there's a method to the madness. And when they see their health improve and they see the results of their efforts and, uh, you know, how walking three times a week for 30 minutes, 
uh, helps their vascularity or their circulation or their their triglycerides or whatever it is. I think it works in that way. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of comments that have come in, and one of them is about a GFR of only twenty percent, and it's taking a toll on her mentally. So we will we will have have somebody reach out, um, um, and uh, uh, we'll we'll take care of that. Maybe somebody can respond uh, uh, to to her directly. Now uh, we have Shima on as well. Shima, um, our our resident dietitian, amazing person. Um, Hi. Had a few things. Yes, definitely. I totally agree with Dr. Cunningham. Um, because sometimes you definitely need in these kind of situations, because I see a lot of uh, patients with GFR, lower GFR levels, and they start Googling things, and then um, they don't really reach out to the right people, and then they get so frustrated because every thing on the Google, um, it's not really like, yeah, sometimes they're research-based, but everything is very like black and white, and then people start um, really get overwhelmed with a lot of information. And that's why I think we are all here to support everyone. And then honestly, I think this whole process needs to be taken slowly. And then I always tell everyone, like, try to take one small step and see what is more realistic for you, because every person is different. Your GFR might be 20 or somebody else's with a GFR of 12, the needs are going to be so different. Um, and I know a lot of people, I'm just going to give you an example. Um, there are people that they come to me, they're like, oh, I just heard like um, avocados are not good for me. Should I just like stop eating avocados? This is like a very simple example. But that's only not good for you if your potassium is high, if or like there's some sort of different things are going on. So definitely, we're always here to to support everyone and then find small goals and start from there because once you get all the information from online or some of this stuff that you want to just do it right away it's going to be so overwhelming so it's better to start realistic and set realistic goals like also Dr. Cunningham just mentioned if you're going to do exercise I always tell everyone just try 30 minutes of walking. You don't need to go to the gym and then try to do like a really crazy different exercises. Just start 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and then every month increase it more than like increase another 30, another 10 minutes. That will be easier on your whole level of, you know, lifestyle. Yeah. Now, Shima, I think you, you said several very important things. One is, uh, baby steps are always good, you know, especially if you're exercising. The second thing is put realistic goals. You know, the new year just started, we have resolutions. So one of the things that I would ask all the audience today is to, to make some resolutions. And, 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 and it's not just for one week, two weeks, but, but things that you can stick by, small changes in, in your diet. And I do want to circle back on about the avocado uh, because it's, it's really important that, that the diet is linked to your labs. The diet is not linked to the fact that you have kidney disease. And I think that's a very, very important point to keep in mind um, because you, you can even have with advanced kidney disease, you can have, have low potassium. In that case, you probably would benefit from eating avocados. So that's where I think it's, it's, it's very important that you speak to a good dietitian. There's one right in front of you. Um, and and what, when I say by a good dietitian, is, is somebody who actually understands not just that you're getting disease, but your labs and who you are, right? Diet is probably one of the single most, you know, I mean, I, I always ask about diet to my patients and I always ask like, what did you have for dinner last night? But ask yourself, when is the last time your physician asked you about your diet? Um, and that probably is one of the single most important things that you can do. All the medications aside, if you don't have a proper diet, it's always just bandages, you will progress. So eating a healthy diet, setting realistic expectations. Um, so, you know, and I will say, if you, quantity is also very important. You know, it's just not cutting this, all this off is probably not the right way. Enjoy your food, but enjoy it in, in a, in a, controlled fashion. 
So having the right diet, having mental you know, health, which I think is very important. Mental health impacts everything. In, in, in my opinion, it, it, it's, it's impact your quality of life. It impacts your sleep. And, and sleep is something else we haven't spoken about. We are going to do one of the chats on sleep because I think that's something else that's quite important. But, but all those things are, are actually quite significant in getting the right support group, what other people have shared. So Shima, I think you have done, uh, uh, have so many. Uh, Jordan, I think made a video of one of the um, recipes uh, that, that you have. I think Jordan, if you can post the, um, the newsletter as well, that'd be great um, in the chat box, if that's possible. We just did our what we our first newsletter came out thanks to Jordan uh, and her team, and it gives you a very good. Um, please do read that newsletter. Uh, it's all that we do, and with some very very important information. So, anything else, um, Shima? You want? I also wanted to touch base. Another thing that I want to just talk about is the supplement because I get a question all the time, especially for patients with CKD or people that who got the transplant because the diet is going to be so different after you get the transplant and also before transplant, after transplant. Um, and then I know a lot of people always like promote on different things. Like this is one thing that we talked about it before about like supplements and then shiitake mushroom supplements is a thing right now it's going around. And then you have to make sure that you speak with your um, doctor, with your healthcare provider, because those kind of different supplements can interact with your medication. So you need to be like very careful with these kind of different recommendations out there that are not sometimes even um, research based. So that's yep. going to be like one important thing. A very important point. I mean, everything that we speak about at 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 the core programs is science and evidence based. This is not our personal opinions that we should do this. Um, if there is no data or science to back it up, um, and sometimes the evidence is not strong, not everything has strong evidence, uh, but we, we look at, at, does it make any sense? What does the scientific community think about it? What do the experts think about it? And then we give you our, our recommendations. But I think it's really, I mean, these all these fads that come up, supplements you're talking about, um, uh, drug, drug, we, we're, we're working on some, something else as well for supplements, but be careful about, it. so when a drug comes to the market um, and we do all those trials, there's phase one, phase two, phase three, there's preclinical trials, there's animal data, that's how, and, and a lot of these drugs never make it to the market, but the herbal supplements don't have those restrictions and they just get in. So be very careful. I get all these questions, you know, what should I take this? What should I take this? I said, I can't answer that. And it's not that they're not effective. They might be effective, but they might also be very dangerous. But sometimes they might not be effective at all. So we take that with a load of salt. And if somebody's saying that making that claim that the, these supplements are asked for, for good clinical trials or studies that have been done on that, and, and let's just see what they come up with. So I think, I think the, it's not just the advice. You also should be very careful where that advice is coming from, you know? And how much it's 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 weighted um, as, as far as evidence is concerned. So diet is important, and I think Nanette put that in the in, in the chat that diet and exercise plays a key role in our overall mental health, and that is so important. Um, you know, as sometimes they say, you are what you eat, right? And 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 that 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 does have have impact. So so on your mood, diet has impact, and that's where I think. Having having a discussion with a good dietitian is 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 very critical. So thank you, Shima, and thank you uh, for being yeah. a member of our core kidney program, yes, and thank, thank you, you for you. helping everybody. Uh, we'll be more from Shima and check out her recipe. I think uh, Jordan put that in in the um, chat, and Jordan also made uh, a short video of that as well. So thank you very much. Um, now I would want to touch, uh, go over some of our living kidney donors. Uh, I always say we have two kidneys and if you are in good health, then you can donate one kidney. Um, it's, it's a very rigorous process that, that potential donors go through. And if they are cleared, uh, 
then that's based on what we know at this time. And you know, obviously in the future, things might, might change, but we have several kidney donors um, on the call today. I always say it's a priceless gift. When you donate a kidney, our kidney donors are a, a, a different breed completely. I mean, they, they are, are just different class of people in my opinion. Uh, so I will start off with our lead ambassador, Brian Gillum. No, Brian, you're here. Just want to make sure that you're, you're not muted. I I was muted and off. So following the rules, following the rules. So <laughs> thank you. Th thanks for having me. I'm just so so happy to be here and you know just representing our our group, the Core Kidney Group, as a as a donor. And um, it's just a special thing that we have. And you know you're talking about having. An extra kidney to give away, just like Alex has stated, you know, it's uh, it's just you don't realize that you can live a healthy life like that. And most people don't realize that. And that's what we're working on now is, you know, we're trying to um, get more information out there about how you can be healthy and live a health, healthy lifestyle with one kidney, which, which is just normal life. So um, I'm just thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be here with Nanette and Mark, two very close people to my heart and what Nanette's been through and what she's spoken about is so important and just, you know, following her journey, it's been just absolutely amazing. It's just showing the great things that we can do as a group together, as our core kidney group has shown, we are strong in numbers and I'm just so thankful that uh, she's been able to complete the process. Yeah. And also Brian, you, you're a kidney donor, but but you have gone one step even beyond that and you have helped so many people, so many people, right? We are so grateful for all that you have done and keep keep, keep giving. So thank you very much. You've made such a big difference. And I know Nanette can speak um, uh, on that as well, but but unconditionally you have helped so many people and, and, and your team of Circle of Core. So we're very grateful. I appreciate that. You know, like, like I said at the gala, that there is uh, nothing more important to me than doing this besides my family. So besides my family, this is the most important thing in my life is, is working with this. And, you know, just everything would just follow the whole process of the net, you know, you're gonna get tears from me too. And Nanette and Rick, and you know, just going through that whole process has been, it's, it's all worth it. Everything we do, like I always say to you, Dr. Stogie, it's like if, if we do all these things and we help one person, it's all worth it. And, you know, here we, we've completed a, a journey from beginning to end over all the years. And it's just so meaningful. So, you know, I just this is so important to me and it humbles me to be involved with the people that we're involved with here and, and you and Christina. So thank you so much. And all the other doctors that are in our group. Brian, you kept our our hope so alive and so strong during this journey. You know, my husband, um, who's a fixer by nature, felt so powerless. Um, you know, I was doing the things that I felt I could to make a difference, but you were that beacon of light, kind of what I call our Sherpa through this <laughs> process. Um, you were there every day, checking on us, guiding us, giving us kind words, um, showing up for us. And, um, I can't explain how impactful that was and what a game changer that was for me and for my family. You reached out to potential donors who were interested. You reached out to family who needed support. And um, it was a game changer. You know, what you ambassadors do is, is just living angels. I don't know a better term for it. I, I, I would agree in the net completely. And, and with Brian, you know, so, you know, he's a kidney donor himself. Um, he, he in, you know, he has called so many people about, um, you know, with their questions about, about donation, but, but more than that, he is always the kidney disease awareness. And, and so many people have called me and saying that we, we saw somebody wearing the cold kidney hat. Who is that? And he said, well, that's Brian. That's Brian Killam. And, and just the fact that they are noticing it, 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 it's spreading awareness. I mean, the other thing that I want to mention is, let's think about this for a second. You know, uh, open your TV and, and 
or even internet, you hear about colon cancer, you hear about heart disease, you hear about diabetes, you hear about breast cancer, you hear about Alzheimer's disease. How many times do you hear about kidney disease? Think about that. Notice that in the next two weeks when, when, when you're watching TV and it doesn't come up. We don't get the, the attention that, and, and it's, it's, it's significant contribute towards morbidity, mortality, and cost. The, the second highest cost driver of care at UCLA Health is end-stage kidney disease. So it's, it's definitely a, a problem that we need to tackle at a society level. And that's where I think the cold kidney are ambassadors. What makes cold kidneys different from the other programs? And we have other programs at bigger, big academic institutions. And I, I always say this, and I'll say that again, it's a circle of cold. It's our patient support and advocacy group that really uh, defines. We have another kidney donor, um, uh, Mr. Brock Hall. Um, and, and Brock, do you wanna say a few, few, few words as well? Sure, be glad to. Can you hear me fine? Oh, yep, we can hear you fine. Perfect. You know, um, I was fortunate enough to get exposed to uh, organ transplant uh, back when I was younger. And then uh, as I got a little older, I got to sit down on a surgery and I saw a bilateral nephrectomy. I was like, wow, and what is this patient going to do next? And yeah, I learned that they needed a kidney. I was a little young at the time, but I was like, oh, well, when I'm old enough, I should definitely do that. If I get the chance, I should be able to give someone a kidney. Um, and lucky enough, it came up for me a few years later, um, I ran into a neighbor who needed a kidney. They were good. They were, um, they had the genetic polycystic kidney disease. I said, okay, well, when you're ready, let me know and we'll get this taken care of. And it, it just seemed like there's, there's a risk. It was very low reward, very high. So why not do it? It just made sense. Um, but I tell you after, Meeting this group, the community, the, you know, you donate, you get to give this one thing and, it's, and you feel good about it, but then you go, wow, there's so much more out there that we can do. And so I feel just blessed to be part of this group. So I can now go out and talk to people and point people to this UCLA core kidney program where we can advocate for kidney health and give people the help they need, give them hope, inspiration, um, and help people make the right choices. And, and, and Brock, you, you really have inspired so many people and, and you know, you're such a humble person. Um, and I think you mentioned something that's very important. You know, we always talk about what the recipient gets, right? The recipient is getting a kidney, a gift of life. But I think what you alluded to is even more important. What does a donor get? And I can tell you what I feel the donor gets and I would like to hear from you and from Alex, who's our non directed donor, I've seen that it's fulfillment. You know, as human beings, we want to help other people. And, and uh, Brock, just like Brian, that's why you're here. You actually have helped so many people beyond just a kidney donation. So we're very grateful for that. You're 100% right. And I'm, I'm here for, it's, it's almost, it's, it's half for selfish reasons because it feels so good to be a part of this and to, I get to help people do things, get better, learn more, take better care of themselves. And you know, we're, we're lucky to, to be in that situation. So anybody listening, please engage with us because you're, you're doing us a favor. We're here to help. I mean, this is, this is an amazing group of people. I, I, I just can't say enough. Um, and they're doing it on their time, uh, unconditionally, unconditionally, with nothing in expectation except for what what Brock said. So Brock, we're very grateful and thank you on behalf of UCLA Health for all that you have done. Well, thank you for allowing me to be part of the program. Thank you, thank you so much. And with that, maybe Alex now. Yeah, Alex. sure, thanks Dr. Rostogi. I was a non-directed donor in the spring of last year. I never knew my recipient, I still haven't met her, I, I do know it's a woman in Chicago, but that's about it. Um, from what I've been told, non-directed donation is kind of rare. I think a lot of people don't really know about it. I learned about it on an episode of the Hidden Brain podcast, if you're familiar with that, on the topic of effective altruism. And the this journalist, Dylan Matthews, had gone through the process, and he talked about sort of 
the morality of keeping two kidneys when in reality, a young, healthy person like myself really only needs one. Once I kind of fact checked that, it was uh, pretty much a no brainer. The idea that, you know, my life would go back to normal within, you know, weeks, which it certainly did. I had an easy process. And with that, you know, a few weeks of inconvenience, you could literally save someone's life. That was, you know, for me, a no brainer. And I do know it's rare. I, I do. I am aware that no, people aren't so aware of it. I think people are more comfortable giving it to someone they know, a family member or a friend. And the thinking I kind of came to is like, just because somebody's my family member or friend doesn't inherently give them more value than a stranger. Whoever this woman is, I'm sure her friends and family care about her just as much as I care about mine. My friends and family aren't inherently special just because they're mine. So that was an easy decision once I kind of came to a few understandings. Yeah, that's why what Nana said, you're angels, you know, that's, that's, you're an angel, um, Alex. And, and I think you made a comment that saving life, but I think it's more than that. You are saving society because that one person impacts the family, which impacts society. So if you think about that, the impact is much more than that one person. I always say that. And there was uh, a non-directed, actually, it was Michelle, one of our, um, um, our, our ambassadors as well. And she gave a kidney and the recipient, I think, has six or nine kids. It impacted the entire family. So so thank you very much. And, and, and Alex, you're absolutely right. So they're, they're non-directed donors and, and we don't have that many. And, and that's also starts a chain. And so, so we'll be talking that about in a future programs, but, but you know, just the outlook you have, it's, we're so grateful, Alex. Thank you very, very much. And, and thank you for, for you know, spreading the word. That's also important. That's the other thing for all the people attending today, spread the word, get the information out there. You know, you saw that podcast, maybe we should do these podcasts, you know, bring people on and, and, and tell them a picture worth a thousand words, right? Uh, there are a lot of questions about, well, you know, what happens to me when I donate a kidney? And, and I think that's, that's you know, it's, it's the workup to the process and post-surgical, right? And then long-term. I think that's something that, that we, we can be discussing. So thank you so much. Any, any parting advice to our, our group here, Alex? It was such a simple, you know, you kind of outlined the process of like screening, surgery, recovery. The going through all of the administrative stuff and tests was 10 times more inconvenient than the actual surgery itself. Like, you know, you go through a year of tests and, yeah. then, uh, you know, a week of dealing with surgery stuff. And, and, and the reason why it's so thorough is we want to make sure that it's safe for the donor. You know, that's that's uh, um, we, that's that's the whole purpose. But uh, but thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. And, and, and you'll be see, seeing and, and hearing a lot from Alex throughout the year and beyond. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we also have Dr. Shah here, our, our other transplant nephrologist. If you want to say a few words about living kidney donation and the gift of life. Thank you, Dr. Rostogi. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, Happy New Year. And what a great uh, interactive discussion. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with, uh, with the greatness of uh, these um, wonderful individuals that uh, you so aptly put Dr. Rostogi. It just doesn't impact one, uh, one life, the recipient, but it's a ripple effect. The ripple effect uh, is such a, uh, you know, um, positive uh, thing for the entire society. Uh, just to um, uh, shed a little light in terms of science of this transplantation, uh, living donor transplantation, and, and Nanette, as um, she threw the word preemptive today, is, I mean, kidney disease in, uh, in its different stages 
is no not good for the patient and you know to um, deal with it over the stages of one two three four and five when it reaches end stage renal disease fortunately we have several different modalities to sustain life such as dialysis hemodialysis peritoneal dialysis but as we all know um kidney transplantation is the best modality it um, um gets them better health, as we heard live today from um, from our recipient. Uh, there's a survival advantage for sure and preemptive, which means the patient who hasn't seen dialysis yet gets a transplant, um, gets a transplant, has a better outcome. Their mortality rates, which means uh, chances of death are much lower as compared to other patients on dialysis. And their uh, kidney function, the transplant kidney functions best over a period of time, uh, long term. And this is all um, uh, evidence-based with uh, large studies. And you also alluded to the donors and the donor health. We have the non-directed donors. I mean, what a gift of life this is. Um, and finally, uh, I think the unmet need is, which is what Core Kidney is doing. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that we have, there was nothing like this in the years past. I've been doing this only for maybe, maybe 20, 25 years now, but the Core Kidney program is spreading the awareness and in such a wonderful format. To me, this is new and this is great. And this is so awesome. This will impact lives positively. So thank you very much. No, thank you, Dr. Shah. And Dr. Shah, this key, a, a question came in for you and Dr. Sarkar. Um, can you say how previous donors are treated if they ever need a kidney themselves? So, I mean, Dr. Shah, I think you can. Dr. Sarkar, go ahead. I heard you. <laughs> okay, don't worry. I, I was about to say you could just finish answering the question, but, you know, as Dr. Shah said, um, you know, this is truly a gift of life you give. And I can promise you, I think absolutely every transplant center honors your donation and treats you with a lot of respect. Now, um, God forbid, if a donor does get into trouble in terms of kidney dysfunction after they have donated over a year of time, you know, life happens, things change in your life, um, then you have this little, um, kind of rule, for lack of a better word, or this clause in the transplant laws that you will enter the list and you will be entering the list on the top for receiving a kidney transplantation because you were a donor. So you have this little clause that supports you even farther down in your life, God forbid something was to happen past that donation. Great point. So so uh, just to summarize that question, and, and Dr. Shah, let me know if you need, to, if you want to add something to that, but that's important. They, first of all, we, the, the screening process is very thorough. Um, there are very few patients, if any, that end up on dialysis themselves if they're donated, and if they do end up there, they go on top of the list. Is that correct, Dr. Sarkar? Is that what you said? That's yes. correct. Yes. That's correct. Perfect. Dr. Sarkar summed it up, yes. Perfect, great. So. Uh, I think I think I I hope that answered the question that came in the chat box that that's uh, the Q and A box. Sorry, um, that is actually uh, a, a corner. There are a lot of things that we do to protect the donor. Um, um, finances is the only thing that we can't do. So there could not be any financial exchange for a kidney donation in in the United States. Um, I think we're running out of time. I, I, I do want to thank um, all our Bruin Beans who are on. Um, I want to thank Jordan for putting that newsletter together. If you haven't read that newsletter, please do so because uh, that will cover a lot. We also have uh, Mr. Lewinson on and, and so many, many other uh, people from, 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 from our circle of core and, and our patients. At the end, I'm not sure Mary Beth is she was having some technical issues, but if you want to say a few words, and then I think Nanette, I'm going to give it back to you to sum it up. Thank you, Dr. Stogie. Um, wow, what a great uh, what a great evening shared with all. Um, I would have loved to hear from our Mary Beth. She's wonderful, but uh, we'll we'll hear from her again soon. So. 
you know, we covered a lot of ground tonight about mental health, about diet, about the importance of building community and about what the core kidney brings to the community. And I just want to end by talking about core kidney program and um, the amazing people that are part of it, the amazing leaders in you and Christina and Dr. Sakar and Dr. Shaw um, that help us all in this journey and that people can reach out if you have questions about resources, if you want additional information about what you heard tonight, I think your ambassadors are willing to reach out to you. They're willing to respond to your questions. Uh, Core Kidney is willing to respond to your questions. And our goal, our focus 2023 is to continue to raise that awareness, be of support and, um, and really impact the community in, in a positive way. Nanette, I, I just want to bring up one more thing that you discussed with me today about these um, groups within our Facebook page, right? Yes. Um, so I've spoken to my beans. Um, we're going to start that. I, I really like that idea. So within within our, our, our Core Kidney Facebook page, so if you haven't visited, um, um, Jordan, if you can put that link in, in the chat, if you haven't visited our Core Kidney Facebook page, please do so. And we will be starting groups for different disease states, whether it be ADPKD, Fabrase, Elports, dialysis, living donors, transplant. So we'll, you'll be hearing. So I, I really like that idea. And you can actually have a group discussion within that group and sharing. I think sharing information is very important. Mm -hmm. So, so that, will, that will be our next. March 12th is our walk at the beach. So please, please make sure that everybody attends that. And share. that's the other thing, you know, you should attend, but also bring other people to attend that as well. Increase the, the love for kidneys. Even if they have nothing to do directly with kidney disease, bring them to the beach. It, it will be a great event, very uplifting event. So, um, and then we also have a conference on March 9th. Sorry, Nanette, you wanna say something? Um I just wanna say, as you said, make sure that you vet the information that you get on Facebook, just like you would anything on the internet, make sure you vet that with your professional care team before you implement any type of dietary or supplement or any type of changes. Yep, that's very important. Talk to your team first you know, and get the right team. Yeah. And that the March 9th conference, um, I don't know how many years you've done it. I've watched it the last three huge information, lots of impactful knowledge that is shared. And so I encourage everybody, patients and, and families to join that patient conference on March 9th. Very good, great. So I think that's all from our end, Annette. And thank you so much. You know, you represent the core and um, thank you. You look beautiful as always, Nanette. Say hi to Diana. And uh, we'll see you soon. We love you, Dr. Stogie. Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.